welcome to the Tumbleweed Podcast, where we discuss an eclectic range of topics, including business, design, Texas culture, and everything in between. We're two teachers that turned a side hustle into a nationally known apparel brand, and now we work with some of the biggest names in Texas. We strive to never stop exploring and continue to draw inspiration from our adventures. So drift and explore or raise a glass. We're always ready to hang out and talk about the things that we love. So come roll with us as we drift and explore. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Jeb Matalich uh, with Tumbleweed Textiles. I am the uh, co-owner and uh, creative and artist on the team. I'm joined here with my buddy, Brian. What's up? I'm Brian Wysong, uh, same as Jeb, co-founder and co-owner of Tumbleweed Textiles, uh, but I also kind of am in the CEO, uh, director of marketing role uh, with our business. Yeah. So like you said, marketing. I used to call you the marketing guru because you uh, you showed me so many different things and you're a marketing guy. My wife's also a marketing uh, um she has a marketing degree as well, so I know all about marketing. Well, that kind of wraps, you know, kind of brings us to what I want to talk about today. And I know a lot of people are interested in, in kind of hearing about um, marketing and kind of how that plays in, in businesses and then how we've kind of used that um, along our journey of, with Tumbleweed Textiles and, and marketing. So, I mean, maybe I'll just start off by asking, because um, I know we get this question a lot, but like, how did you, like, what do you bring into the table? Everyone knows me kind of as the artist and the, you, they see the, the t-shirt part of it and, and the, and the graphics and they think of us as a t-shirt company or a, a lifestyle apparel brand. And so they see the art a lot. That's something that's visual that a lot of people do see, uh, outwardly, but marketing, sometimes there's a little bit of behind the scenes that also ties in the art. So give me a little bit of background on your marketing and, and how you got into marketing and then kind of how it ties in with our company. Well, first off, I think we can go ahead and end this podcast now because marketing guru, I think I'm done. Oh, yeah. That, I, I refer I, to you as that. I hit the pinnacle of my career now, so I, I'm, I'm calling go. it quits. You're done. But, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that I've been good with it. Uh, marketing for me is the all encompassing aspect of a business. You know, I think there's probably two functions of a business that will either kill or grow a business and that's accounting finance and marketing. Um, and so specifically with what I do here with Tumbleweed Textiles, it is, I like to think I'm the artist of marketing. Uh, it's creating kind of a, the goals and the mission of who we are and what we do and defining who we're trying to reach and making sure all of our promotions our goals, our missions, our social media posts, our products, um, our accounting decisions are effectively getting us to where we want to go. Um, so to me, it's kind of management and marketing um, of what we do. So my role with uh, Tumbleweed Textiles is obviously marketing um, and management. And so to me, I would like to think of myself as my art of being the, the marketing um, artists of the team, you know, it's, so it's, it's creating goals, setting our mission, uh, making sure everyone on the team's tasks and duties align to that mission. And it's kind of also creating, uh, our target audience who we're trying to reach per each campaign, per each project so that then it implements into our social media, our print, uh, ads, our online ads, commercials that we do, trade shows, events, just making sure our story is told, our brand is seen effectively to who we are and uh, the message that we're trying to portray. Yeah, and you mentioned target audience. I think that's something that's kind of, uh, you know, is vital uh, anytime you start a company and then obviously with the marketing part of it. But, like, how how did we maybe talk through, you know, so people can kind of understand, like, how we figured out kind of what our target audience was for Tumbleweed? I mean, Right. I have some ideas. Well, I think it's probably easy to say when we first started, two dudes that were teachers that love Texas, we were looking at reaching other men like us, right? We, we I think when we started a company, we were creating T-shirts, and we were thinking, okay, we're going to find other gentlemen uh, between the ages of, you know, 30 to 50, 45-ish 
that love Texas music, barbecue, and like wearing t-shirts and jeans and probably some sort of boots, right? And I think that's what we set off to do is reach people like us, right. which is easy to do. Yeah. But I think that quickly changed because as we started uh, getting ourselves on the Facebook and having customers uh, like through at that time it was Etsy, we were able to gather data and see, okay, it's not just men buying our product. Yeah, most definitely not. It was a lot of women. Yeah. And now it was probably women buying product for their brothers, their husbands, their sons, or for themselves. So it could have been a skewed data point. But at that moment, we realized who is our audience. It's not about the demographic as much as it is the, what I consider a psychographic. It's a human that loves Texas, loves local scene, craft beer, craft wine, local food, restaurants, supporting local businesses. It's the kind of person that would want to go out to their downtown square and see the local art, um, take their kids to a restaurant or the park, be outside. And I think our target audience it encompasses that Texas culture and lifestyle. It's a person that wants to have a good time. I almost sometimes want to call it the suburbia adventurist, uh, right. the person that just has a good time yeah. and, and loves to support the local cause. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, when we first started out, like you were mentioning, like Texas is so diverse. And, you know, you think about Austin, like back in the 60s and 70s, like when the whole Armadillo World Headquarters thing, you know, was going around and Willie and, and Waylon and all those guys were playing music down there. I mean, you had like this grouping of where you'd have the Cowboys sitting next to the hippies, next to the college kids, next to the, the mom that's, you know, out on a girl's night or whatever. I mean, Texas, people that love Texas, it's it's a wide range of, of folks. You know, no you, doubt. There's, I mean, so yeah. that's, you know, finding that that balance and then finding something, I guess, through artwork and then also marketing, the, how to connect and, and find something that kind of can. And I think that we've done a really good job of like, you know, having T-shirts that, yeah, someone out in West Texas might want to wear, like, well, they're plowing the fields, but then also something yeah. someone's going to wear to a show, kind of a hippie dude down in Austin that wants to, you know, cut loose and cut the yeah. sleeves off or do something. There. I mean, I think we've done a pretty good job with that. Um, so our target audience, like you said, it's just people that love Texas. And, and we've right. found that it can be uh, a lot of different, you know, people uh, as far as that goes, which which makes it cool. It's not just one little subset um, or anything like that. And like like you mentioned earlier, yeah, we found out real quick that women are the shoppers yeah. in the family. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, up to almost 65% of our customers sometimes, or, or, or I know I've looked at some data, you know, are women. You know, oh, for sure. And followers on social media are women. Yeah. So because they're, they're doing the shopping for the guys, for their kids, whatever. So we had to yeah. kind of – make some changes, you know, or th changes of thought, I guess you could say. For sure. It, and it's, to me, our brand is all about the family. And what, is, what does that mean? It doesn't mean it's uh, husband, wife, and their kids. It could be brother and sister, sisters, brothers, girlfriends that are just friends, uh, neighbors. But community of people that want to go somewhere and they can wear four or five of our different products, a hat, a shirt, carrying our koozie, carrying a mug, whatever it is, and they're representing the lifestyle within a certain area. Let's say it's a concert, it's a picnic, it's 4th of July, whatever it might be. Um, and they, they can bring their whole family. They can bring all their friends into our store, and there's something for everyone. And one of the things I've always learned is you can't be all things to all people, but I do believe we can be all things to a certain kind of lifestyle. Yeah. And that's adventure. And that's the reason why we came up with our motto, Drift and Explore. And I know drift, Drifter can maybe have a negative connotation, but went along with the word tumbleweed, is we want to be something that's strong and bold, decisive. Uh, we make choice in the decisions of having a good time, uh, trying new things, uh, but we look good while we do it. Yeah, and I think with the drifting part too. Yeah, so so it's, so that's not negative, but I think I think of drifting as kind of more like exploring. Like you're kind of like not well. I, I, we said drift and explore. So drifting is more like you're kind of up for wherever the night takes you or no where the, the adventure takes you. You're just you're on your your way and you're not you don't have a set plan necessarily. But then you get there and you're exploring new things and not not being afraid to to road trip or try something new or go yeah. to a new place, check out a new band. So right. I think that totally ties in. Well, I think, so with marketing, 
one of the things I always like to discuss with uh, Katie, who uh, is our director of marketing, uh, with me and Hillary, my wife, who also uh, kind of oversees more of the marketing side of our design, is at the end of the day, a lot of times brands, people, artists, whatever it might be, will look at the very micro level, but you got to first to make a most strategic decision is look back up bird's eye view and kind of see, okay, where are we trying to go? Uh, what's our end goal? So for us, it might be sales, right? Like we want to make money so that then maybe we can support people in our community. Okay. Then you got to look at who you're trying to reach. Then you got to look at, okay, how do you reach them? And then you look at how do you, how can you communicate to them? Is it social media? Is it an ad? Because I think they, they say the rule of thumb is it takes seven times to communicate something before someone actually hears it and makes a decision on it. And my point is, is everything about what I do with our brand is overseeing the bigger picture, making sure, okay, your art is absolutely incredible. Our products, I believe, are top notch. But we've got to make sure people are effectively communicated to, that we're effectively communicating who we are, what we're selling, so that when a customer buys it, not only do they buy what they thought they were buying, but they want to then take it and wear it. That they're proud enough about it that they want to tell their friends. And probably the ultimate goal is that not only do they tell their friends, but they rate us on Google with a five-star review or go on a social media, post a picture and say, hey, everybody, go check out this new company I found, Tumbleweed Textiles. And so marketing is understanding that full process because when you understand some things that we do now might lose money, but it's an investment, uh, investing in our customer for a future decision, that's where we see the success is when everything we do is truly purpose-driven. Um, and it's it, and it's not like trying to over uh, like make things overly analytical and boring, but it's kind of being the science of people and psychology, it's just trying to know – be one or two steps ahead of the decisions our customers make and helping manage their next steps with what we provide them in communication and the image we portray. See, that's why we call you the marketing guru. <laughs> I don't uh, understand half the stuff that you just said, but it sounds really cool. <laughs> and I'm sure if I go back and listen to this, it's going to make a lot more sense to me. But yeah, you hit you hit the nail on the head. I think we've always stayed true to, to who we are and, and kind of tried to keep you know, the marketing that we do true to our company and have that tie in uh, oh. so that everything kind of fits and, and, and works together. Now, thinking back, kind of like when we were first getting started, you know, we were trying to figure out ways of, you know, how, how are we going to get the word out about our company? And, and a lot of times, you know, uh, we were using platforms like Etsy uh, and they had some things where you could run like targeted, not really even targeted ads, that they were just your your listings would show up more often, right. you know, uh, with keywords and things like that. But then as we kind of moved uh, beyond that, we had to kind of find some ways to um, to get people to know about our brand. And early on, you know, an easy thing to do was, you know, social media uh, and Facebook and things like that. But, like, I just remember not having a whole lot of money budgeted uh, for yeah. marketing for our company and stuff. Uh, maybe share with, with everybody that's listening – uh, some of the things that we did kind of with a smaller budget. And then it's, it could be something that other people uh, may be starting out uh, a business or wanting to get the word out about whatever product they're trying to sell or something like maybe give them some, some hints on or some tips on um, maybe with a small budget and kind of some ways that we use the small budget uh, and to get the word out. Um, and then kind of as we grew uh, what that looked like. Right. So uh, my, my background a little bit. So, and, and this kind of a preface to where we're going is uh, prior to t the start of Tumbleweed Textiles, um, I did work at a marketing agency uh, in Dallas. And prior to that, okay, when I was in college, actually, I was the director of marketing of, tr it's called Trinity Church. It's one of the largest churches in Lubbock, which provided opportunities to also uh, manage and promote music and bands. Because we would put on big concerts with a lot of Christian bands and wow. whatever. Um, and there's another thing called Paradigm Ministries uh, that I helped with. So I got really involved with my fraternity at, at the church and my job uh, in marketing. And being a nonprofit, I learned very quickly that you had to try to make things happen with very little budget. Yeah. Especially when you're in a college ministry uh, and you're not, the elder ministry, when you're giving a lot of tithing, right. they're not putting a lot of money in that college ministry. No. 
And so through that, and then when I started working at the marketing agency, I felt like I kind of became an expert in nonprofit marketing. Basically, another word is trying to make something happen with no money. And there's a author called J. Conrad Levinson, I believe, uh, who wrote a book called Guerrilla Marketing. And that's where this con- kind of concept came to mind is how can you make things happen and think of like a, a street team uh, for a band. You know, bands don't have a lot of money, so they're going to go out to the corner of some street and pl- put it, pick up their guitar, play some music, hand out some demo discs back in the day, maybe not now, now Spotify, whatever it might be. But they're able to market themselves at a very low budget. But they're giving them something to walk away with that hopefully allows them to come back, find them on whatever social media or platform they're on. So that's kind of what we did here at Tumbleweed Textiles was how can we make a a lot happen from our small little $700 investment that we initially made on our first T-shirts. And I think you and I, uh, if you remember, we sat down and I created a little target and I said, who is our core audience? And we talked about friends, coworkers, family. And who's the next? Well, maybe people that went to the same college we went to has some sort of association with us. Yeah. And then the next thing would be friends of friends. And then what I did was, okay, the very first low-hanging fruit was how do we reach that first audience? Cheap. Let's use Facebook. Just do yeah. an easy post. Um, I asked you, what are friends that you had? You're like, well, I know, uh, Cliff Kingsbury. And I was like, well, I know a, a guy named Baron Batch who plays for Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, let's, let's send him a free shirt. Yeah. You know, and if you remember, they posted that shirt, maybe on social media wearing it. And we asked him, Hey, if, if we give you this free shirt, can you post it on social media? Yeah. And that's kind of back when influencers were just kind of getting started. And, you know, a lot of those people were really open to, like you said, like Baron Batch, he was open to, to wearing a shirt because he was also at the same time kind of trying to promote his art and things like that at yeah. that time. And so it was kind of a give and take type of deal. Uh, and I know we, we gave some shirts to, to Coach Kingsbury. You know, his dad and my dad actually coached together at New Braunfels, yeah. so they're friends. And so I got a hold of his address up at Tech. We sent him some shirts. He ended up giving them to some of the quarterbacks up there. Um, and some of those guys ended up wearing the shirts, and yeah. they started posting stuff on social media. So it was kind of uh, – in the early days of, of social media and then influencers, you know, we kind of started trying to think of people that had some sort of following to, to sure. reach out to. But and, and that costs us the cost of a T-shirt and shipping. Yeah. You know, and then Baron Batch wears the T-shirt and then like five or six people at Texas like, oh, wait, you're supporting this other Texas Tech brand? Or, hey, oh, Baron, that's, that's my old college director at Trinity Church. I will support him. Yeah. Or for you – friends of your dad and friends of your family think, oh, wait, we'll support a family friend. And even though that was the reason, it might not even be about the product, it's still support. And that was the thing is the first part of marketing to me is build a foundation, make sure we have a quality product, a quality website, but then we start using, utilizing guerrilla marketing because we believe in what we are selling and what we're doing. Uh, And you just believe that if you get the word out, it's going to be like a snowball effect. And people are going to tell friends. um, People are going to share on social media. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, we definitely hit the tech crowd up pretty hard. And then, you know, we started kind of getting into some of the musicians and things. Yeah, I started thinking about some of the early people like Zane Williams. You know, he was always playing like in McKinney, uh, you know, at the Cadillac uh, Pizza there, you know. Like every week, almost he right. had like a weekly deal, and so we were able to get him some shirts. He was able to put, he was kind of starting to build his brand and build his his music career up. The Josh Abbott, when we, right. we had him yeah. wear the Josh, Abbott, he wore one of our beer shirts uh, on Instagram. That to me was one of our big crowning moments, I guess, like right. with the marketing part because. I don't even know that we knew that he had a shirt somehow. I no. Mean, and then he posted it, and, I mean, it got so many. Right. And he tagged us, and then all of a sudden we just had, I mean, it, overnight, I mean, we gained like seven or 800 followers For on sure. Instagram. And it was like, this is crazy. And then we started seeing sales. So yeah. there was, you know, and, a direct correlation. And that's where, you know, earlier I mentioned the investment for something you might see as a return later. And so many business owners get into starting a brand or whatever it might be, and it's all about the right now money. We had no idea if they were going to wear the shirt. We hoped and prayed that we sent out a shirt. We spend money on the stamp and, and, and shipping. Yeah. We hoped that they wear it. And it paid off because they did wear it. But not only did they wear it, I put in a, like a 
thank you letter, right? Like, hey, uh, thank you for wearing this shirt, or we hope that you wear this shirt. Like, I gave them a call to action, like, hey, here's your shirt. Thank you in advance for hopefully supporting us. Here's our social media. You could tag us in, please, you know? Right. Um, and so influencer marketing, utilizing social media in our friends and family. But I think the other part of guerrilla marketing that we took, took part in is uh, what I call experiential marketing. Uh, and that's where we were popping up at, I don't know if you remember, Salina, right? Um, the Cinco, Cinco de, Mayo. de Mayo. So we found a place that was close in our community, people that might not know who we are, but it provides the opportunity to tell our story. And we had a good story. Two teachers. Uh, you were an art teacher and still are. I am a was a marketing teacher. And what we did was put ourselves in a position to tell that story. And even if we didn't sell a product... How many, how many shirts did we sell? Uh, we sold a few. Like, I, don't, I think our like three boots cost five? was like hundred bucks. I don't even know if it was that much. Yeah. So and so, but it allowed us to get in front of people, just like the mu- musician analogy, going on a corner, playing some music, handing out some demo tapes. In a way, that's kind of what we did. Is we popped up a tent, white tent with no branding. Uh, you took a board and painted our name on it. We put out like the two shirts that we had and we just told our story, hoped that someone would buy it or hear, hear our story. Probably gave them some sort of card that said, hey, you can find us here, check us out. We did the same thing at McKinney Trade Days. Yeah. It was a, a full weekend event, 100 degree plus weather. Uh, Hillary and I were out there hustling t-shirts. You came out, hustle shirts. But again, told our story. And we were putting ourselves in the lifestyle that we portrayed. Music, craft beer, um, family friendly atmosphere, uh, good food. It was just putting ourselves in the right places at the right time that people might have interest in what we're saying or what we're selling. Yeah, and I think our family and friends played such a big role in that too. We have so many supportive friends that, you know, with with us being teachers and stuff, like our yeah. whole staff at Liberty kind of got behind us and then a lot of people in the school district too. So they were always wearing it and sharing it. And then I like to think just our designs in general, you know, there's certain shirts that that you wear and it's just kind of like a, like you said, a billboard. I mean, yeah. people want to know where you got that. That's unique. I've never seen that, especially early on, like our Texas town shirt. Everybody wanted to know where to get one of those. Yeah. And, um, it was just like, we were selling those like crazy to do. And then when we started getting sales from people that we didn't know right. from out of state and then, you know, wherever this was like, this is really cool. So for sure. And so, I mean that at the end of the day, that's how we kicked it off. Guerrilla marketing tactics, uh, that I learned through experience learned by reading some books And like they always say, knowledge is power is uh, I think you and I, especially me, we're constantly uh, looking for tips and ideas, studying other companies, uh, looking at other brands, surfing the web uh, with other uh, apparel companies like, okay, oh, they're doing a buy one, get one or, um, okay, they're not doing a sale because they don't want to devalue their brand, but they might be giving away a free sticker in the back or just different ideas and tips that we like scientific method, we would test See if it worked. If it worked, keep on doing it. If it didn't work, stop doing it and find something else to do. Um, but at the end of the day, our marketing is about our customer. It's providing a great experience, tailoring the experience to what would appease them, but never contradicted who we are or who we wanted to be. Um, and most importantly, I feel like we have a really good time when we do it. I mean, we have some great experience. I think about Untap Festival. Uh, right. That was fun. You know, I mean, put ourselves and and that's the other component is I feel like we've done a really good job of is we find what I would consider cult following groups, craft beer, uh, dog lovers, leather good lovers, Texas, uh, passionate Texans is we put our product in a place that there's very passionate people. And not only are they passionate, they tend to be very loyal and supporting a company or a brand. And so as long as we are staying true to who we are and uh, developing product that's authentic, but also reaching that audience, uh, that's how we get our customers. Yeah. And then they keep on coming back for more. Yeah. And then one thing that I just thought of that, that I, I know has played a big role uh, in our marketing is, is email. You know, mm-hmm. I think from a early, from very early on, uh, you and I were both really good at trying to capture emails. And, right. And so maybe talk about, kind of how that's played a role in like the last seven or eight years of our 
yeah. um, company because, you know, early on, yeah, it was easy to kind of, you know, with, with a very small email list, we'd have to send out shirts. We're, a lot of it's word, word of mouth or getting out to little events and stuff to get, to get our name out there. But now as we start to capture or get those customers coming in, maybe talk about kind of the importance of, of like capturing email and data nowadays and how, how that role, how that plays a role in, in what yeah. we do now marketing wise. Well, I think so marketing has a very negative connotation to it. People think of sales and uh, manipulation and trying to gain an advantage over someone. And to me, it's not about marketing. So you say I'm a marketing guru. It feels really good. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, man, I must be kind of sleazy, you know. No, you're not. <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, when it's really all said and done, it's not about selling or manipulating it's about good communication and when you stop and think about it we are providing a product a service and what i would like to think a piece of art i mean every shirt we have is a piece of art it's something that you hillary my wife uh, fred mckenna one of our creative team members uh, has spent a lot of effort and time creating from nothing to something and what to me marketing is for us is communicating something great to the consumer for something they actually want. It's not manipulating it. And I say that because it goes into email marketing is our email marketing isn't trying to say, Hey, we're doing a 50% off sale. Come buy something. It's just trying to inform customers that want an email that, Hey, th this is a new product that we have, or uh, this is a, a sale that we have going on or um, Hey, here's a recipe, you know, we, you yeah. know, quality content, you know, people don't always want to be sold, but they do want to see maybe, uh, something that is of interest. Like, uh, here's how to dress up a t-shirt, uh, in jeans or a skirt or shorts or whatever it might be, yeah. or, Hey, everybody, Josh Abbott did wear a shirt and that creates credibility that then people are like, Oh wait, they, I'm going to go buy that shirt. Cause he has that shirt. Right. I hate getting emails from brands that are just like sale, sale, sale. It's yeah. just always just something like in your face slapping. You know, I, I like that. We've kind of gone, like you said, like try to create some sort of content where there's a video, but you want to inform people like, you know, I'm, my wife makes fun of me, but I, I'm a, I'm a member of so many brand emails. Like my, oh, yeah. my inbox is like crazy of all the brands that I like and wear and things like that. But I really like the, and, and I, and I signed up for them. If I don't like them, I could unsubscribe, right. but I like them. And I like the ones that, that are creative with, yeah. with what they do. And, and it's not always like in your face sale. Now I want to be informed if something's new because I right. like that brand. So I, that doesn't bother me to get an email from someone that says, Hey, we have a new line out. That's cool. Or, Hey, we're having a big sale. Well, that might be an opportunity for me to take mm -hmm. advantage of that. But I also like the ones that they're not pushy. They're not in your face and they're just, they're just sharing something like yeah. a cool video or they're showing you some sort of content. So mm -hmm. I think, um, our team, um, with Katie, you and Hillary, you guys have done a really good job of kind of finding yeah. that balance of, of, content and then also sure. products and things. Well, I think that's the number one thing. So we also have uh, wholesalers, uh, retailers all throughout Texas. Yeah. And when you think of our company, we're, we have multiple marketing campaigns. We're marketing to people in the city of Frisco for our store. We're creating a campaign for people that shop online that want to go to tumbleweedtextiles.com. And that's not just people in, in Texas. That's people, I mean, you got Texas transplant, transplants that want to buy our goods or someone wants to buy a product to their, for their friend. But we also have our wholesalers that we have to reach at a B2B level. And I say that because our marketing team is making multiple marketing campaigns and decisions all at once. So it's not like, hey, we're doing one marketing campaign for this one new shirt. For every new shirt, we're really kind of creating three or four different campaigns. And yeah. email is just a direct line to our consumer. And all we're doing is not only informing them about it, but to me, it's building a community around what we do. Um, and so, like you said, um, our, I think if you remember this, when we first started our company and we started doing email marketing campaigns, we we're like, ah, oh, we're only going to do it once every like two months. We don't want to bombard people. And we're like, oh, okay, let's do it once a month. And it was like, okay, this is kind of working. It, but we were both kind of scared to bombard our customer. Yeah. Because I, at that time, hated emails. Mm -hmm. And we would listen to podcasts. We would listen to tips and read, you know, read articles and things like It's like, no, keep on sending them. Keep on sending them. Like Gary Vee, you know, you're like, keep on doing it. 
And eventually we realized we're not trying to reach everybody. We're trying to reach the people that want it. And if they don't want it, like you said, they'll unsubscribe. And if they do want it, they'll subscribe. Yeah. And so what we make sure is it's everything is family friendly. Uh, it's it's uh, portraying who we are authentically, you know, authentically. Um, but we're just providing the content that people signed up for. And what we've done since then with our, our team is not only do we just send out one email to everybody, we tailor emails to a specific audience. So we might send out one email to the people that live in the Frisco area that's hyper-focused on our store. We might send one out that is to uh, parents with kids promoting our youth, you know, youth gear. Uh, we might send out a totally another email that's a sale item that is only to people that want to buy that product, and we make sure it doesn't send it out to someone that just bought that product the week before. Yeah. So we're able able to gather data and information through our website to then make tailored decisions on how we send out those emails. And again, it's about tailoring each email to someone that so they want to read it and it's something that they want to uh, have in their inbox yeah that's amazing just the technology nowadays i mean that you can do that i mean of course there's all these companies that you can sign up for email marketing and stuff but just the way that you can actually target yeah. and fine tune the audience that you're really trying to reach like you said like you, we can we can scale it down to the people that have only bought kids you know kids yeah. shirts. And so we know that they probably have young kids. And so if we have a new kids collection coming out, we can send something direct for and sure. target that group. And really, um, it's just amazing. I know we haven't even hardly scratched the surface with some of the things that our yeah. know, platform can do, but it's really crazy that, that, that technology is there. And, and it's just yeah. been fun to utilize that when you think back of where we kind of started. And then another thing that we've kind of utilized probably over the last uh, four or five years is just like uh, social media oh, yeah, like for advertisements sure. and stuff. I mean, if you're not playing that game and you're trying to have a brand or something, uh, you know, yeah. you're missing out on some big opportunities. And we were, again, kind of a little skeptical about doing that. But of course, with all those algorithms and things, and it's crazy. And, and you know it now because you can just Google search something and then you get on Facebook and what's the first ad you see. So oh, yeah. it's like you're, you're definitely being watched. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's kind of a little bit freaky, but. In our world, when you're trying to sell shirts and get the word out about the brand, it is kind of a good deal. Yeah. And uh, something I mentioned earlier, but it's about creating that foundation. So you got to make sure your website's right. And SEO, search engine optimization, you got to make sure the words are right. You got to make sure the graphics are right. You know, so when someone goes to your site, if they click off quickly, it's going to devalue your website, right? Like, but someone spends more time on your website, shops, and has an experience, it adds value to your site. It's like Google, Yahoo, all these different search engines. That's how they value how to get you higher up on their search. But then ads are a big part of that too. And so if you're spending money but have a bad website and you're leading people to your website, you're just wasting a lot of money. Yeah. So you got to optimize your site, make sure it looks good. It's a good experience. I like using uh, secret shoppers, like put a little fr a few friends on there that have an outside perspective and they can give me some critiques. Yeah, that's smart. Um, we utilize our team. Every team member goes on and gives critiques from a different perspective. We work together to optimize and make it right. Uh, but then, you, yeah, you turn on those ads once you're ready. Uh, and the cool thing about the ads is you can uh, target, again, it goes back to targeting. Yeah but reach an audience. And so what we do, and this might be too much information, I don't know, but... Don't give all the secrets. I know, I know. But it's it's crazy because you can take a snapshot of our core audience. So create a Facebook group. Uh, and if, over time, people start following us, Instagram, because they're owned by Facebook. And eventually you see, okay, who is our ultimate uh, audience? And then we can also ta you connect that to our website. So it's not only who follows us, but who's shopping with us. Yeah. And people give away their information like no, no other. You put it into Shopify or in your website. You put it on Facebook. You give it away uh, freely on Instagram. So we're able to take a quick, uh, easy snapshot of who is our premium co customer. And then we can retarget ads to be targeting their friends or their family or yeah targeting people like them based off of interests. And so that when we're doing our ads, we're not wasting money reaching everybody. 
we're hyper focusing it, trying to get the most bang for our buck on the dollar that we're spending. Yeah, that's so smart. I mean, those algorithms are insane, and, and I'm glad we have some some people on our team that work with us that know that stuff inside and out. You know, the guys, um, our, our buddy Murray that that helps us with that kind of stuff. It's been uh, it's really been a game changer, I guess. You know, yeah. with, with just the marketing part uh, through social media and email and stuff like that. So let's talk about like the long game, like, you know, where, where are we, you know, as far as the big picture, like what are we looking for uh, as, as far as like future decisions with marketing? Are, are there any trends or, or things that are happening uh, nowadays that we want to kind of um, steer the ship in that direction? Are you seeing any changes in any of the stuff that we're doing or, or directions that we want to try marketing wise? Yeah, yeah I, I think it's like telling a story. And I think the end game is this, what is our story? And then it's making sure all of our decisions and our investments with marketing and the different things that we do match up to getting us to that story. What do I mean? Uh, I want a human, uh, let's say it's a, a guy and their, their wife or a guy and their girlfriend or a guy and their family standing at a uh, concert at Green Hall, wearing our shirt, wearing our hat with their jeans and boots enjoying the concert and to me then that end goal then is backed up by okay how do we reach that family what kind of product because marketing isn't just in promotion it's also in the the curation of our product is hey we need some texas music designs uh we need uh some designs about blue bonnets right we're going into spring we're got to reach the spring audience because we're going to different events it's creating that picture and then making sure the tasks and the projects reach, you know, reach that goal. And you talk about trends, a lot of the trends that we're seeing right now is truly lifestyle marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't want to have fake models wearing their product. That people don't want to see um, in, in things that are on our authentic. You know, it's, it's the, the trends of marketing that we want to encompass with what we're doing is really what we've been doing for 10 years is stay true to who we are, portray the image and, and quality photography and quality imagery on our site, on our social media, uh, and then just keep on pushing a product that is exactly what we're saying it is. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, our marketing isn't about even telling a story. It's not even about uh, the product. It's people buy and receive exactly what we tell them it is. Yeah. Just being honest. It's about uh, having integrity behind what we do. And to me, one of the best qualities of our marketing is actually our customer service is when people buy a product and they're not really happy about it. Uh, let's say it's too big or too small. They need a, a quick exchange. They call and Sharon or Audrey take care of them. They're like, all right, we'll take care of that. We have free exchanges. We'll, we'll take care of you. And within a week they got their, their product exchange and taken care of. And I think people like the fact that we, always keep people first behind what we do and how we do it. Yeah. And I think you're, you're kind of, I just thought of this when you were talking about like even user generated content, like we were kind of yeah. early on in that, just having people that are our fans that, that buy things from us, our customers, and then have them share it. It's almost like they're doing a lot of the marketing for us. Oh, for sure. They tag us and just like, so just like having authentic people that, that want to share our brand has helped out a ton too. And right. I think, I think I've seen some, some really cool trends with just user generated stuff and just creating content in general, yeah. like just getting it out there, whether it's, you know, behind the scenes kind of stuff, people love to see that it all, as it all goes back to what you were talking about, kind of telling the story uh, and, and how people are interested in, yeah. in, in that. And well, it's showing people how to wear or use a product or service the way they would. So if, if, if people are going to be wearing our products at the local restaurants and bars or church or whatever it might be, let's not show them wearing it uh, at an another state or another, like, you know, uh, scuba diving. Yeah. It's showing people how they would use it. Yeah. And it's showing them with authentic people. It's not going out getting fake, fake looking people that, you know, 99% of people don't look like. Yeah. It's, it's uh, allowing people to see, you know, we are a diverse, authentic brand, uh, that loves Texas, uh, loves uh, hiking and fishing and craft beer and the things that we do. Uh, and hey, here's a product for you. Yeah. And that's how we show it through our videos. And like you said, user generated content. And that's why we do everything we can to promote for our, our customers to repost or reshare an image of them wearing it. Mm -hmm. And that might be us 
putting together a contest or some kind of giveaway to, you know, wearing our product. Yeah. Or the other aspect is collaborations that we do working with other brands that are like-minded showing people, Hey, here's our shirt, but here's a beverage that we support, or here's another restaurant that we support. Um, and really goes back to authenticity, community, um, integrity, uh, and really just effective communication to people showing them, okay, this is who we are, what we do, and this is how you get it. And Hey, if you don't like it or you need something, we'll take care of you, um, through our service. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. I think you, you nailed it on the head. I mean, that's, yeah, marketing plays such a huge role, uh, in our company or any successful company. I think, um, uh, we're definitely on the right track. And I think that you have, uh, definitely kind of led our team, um, with your vision, um, for the brand and kind of how we've done marketing. But uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have enjoyed listening to you kind of talk about the marketing side of our company. So yeah, I think that's probably a wrap for today. Um, Good chat, man. That was good stuff. For sure. Well, I appreciate it. It's uh, rare that I get to talk about the marketing side. So mo- the, the, the glamorous is the design and art. So yeah, it's very glamorous, but glamorous. <laughs> but so anyway. All right. Well, you guys have a good one. Um, thanks for listening. For sure. Have a good one, y'all. <laughs>